Hey, this is Tyler Childers, and you're uh, listening to Walking the Floor. I'm walking the floor over you. Walking the floor. I'm walking the floor. Walking the floor over you. Hola, senores and senoritas. Happy Labor Day. This is Chris Shiflett, and you are listening to Walking the Floor. Make sure you get out uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing today, and hug one of the proud, hardworking American brothers and sisters out there who belongs to a labor union. At uh, Walking the Floor, we are union strong. Just want to make that clear. Oh, boy. I got jet lag, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Got back from Asia this weekend. And I've just been kind of trying to get back into the scheme of things, but it's hard. That's a that's a hard when you uh, thing when you when you fly uh, from west to east. Is that what it is? I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm still kind of upside down. And I woke up way too early this morning to check the surf, but the ocean wasn't cooperating. So now I'm just like really over caffeinated and kind of zombing through my day. But whatever. I'm still gonna get to the beach today. God damn it. So I got to get as much beach time this week as I can because I got to leave again next week. Um, On a sad note, just wanted to say that my heart really goes out to everybody down in Texas and the Gulf Coast area that's been affected by Hurricane Harvey. Uh, It's been awful to watch, you know, on the news every night. And I I suspect that the death toll is going to rise in the coming days. And, you know, anyway, just uh, hoping that things get back to some version of normal down there soon for everybody Uh, affected by that terrible, terrible uh, situation. Okay, Uh, big news for the podcast. Um, I'm heading up north in a couple of days on Friday to go interview superstar Chris Stapleton. That is a huge coup for this here podcast, man. He's like the king right now. Uh, And I'm a huge fan, and I'm very excited. So I'm going to try not to screw that up and get up there and... uh, have some good questions for him. And uh, and I'm actually, while I'm there, I'm going to uh, also interview Anderson East. So it's going to be a little uh, a little uh, walk in the floor twofer. Get a little Chris Stapleton, get a little Anderson East, and then I'm going to try to turn that one around real fast. I might even, I might even post that one uh, next week. We'll see. If I can get it together, I'm going to post it next week. Either way, I'm going to post it real soon. So look for that. All right, let's talk about Zounds.com. Zounds.com, for all you struggling musicians out there, they make gear affordable. Get on over there and check it out. You can split your order total over 4, 6, 8, or 12 monthly payments, and uh, they never charge interest. So get on it. Zounds.com, they got what you need. They got guitars, they got recording equipment, strings, picks, amps, pickups, whatever. Zounds.com, do it. All right, let's get to the interview. Tyler Childers is a young up-and-comer out of Eastern Kentucky who recently released his great second record, Purgatory, produced by none other than Sturgill Simpson, which has been in heavy rotation on my Spotify lately. Uh, He was pretty tired when I interviewed him the other day, um, having played the night before down at the Casbah in San Diego, a venue I know well. Um, he confessed to me afterwards that his tour manager basically had to like kick him out of a deep slumber in order to get him over to the studio in time to, to do this uh, interview. But, uh, you know, such is the life of the young, hardworking, touring musician. This is Tyler Childers on Walking the Floor. Looking over West Virginia, smoking spirits on the roof. She but asked anyway, I want to start with that, like tell me about where you grew you up and, and those people things. and landmarks that inform your songs. I just, you know, I grew up in Lawrence County, Kentucky. It's um, well, they're in the tri-state area, um, about as east as you can be without being in West Virginia. And uh, grew up in a pretty, re- you know, religious family. Right. Um, religion was uh important um in my raisin and uh i was free will baptist and so um i always kid and say that free will baptist is kind of like being amish but you get to keep your tv (laughs) Uh, but uh no so it was um so music music was a big part of the 
the service, you know. Mm. Um, I mean, that that could go sometimes longer than you know, the sermon, and the sermon could last for hours. Right. Um, and what was the music like? I mean, we're talking like, like gospel music? Yeah, like? like, you know, good southern gospel. Um, See, that's an area that, my, that I'm totally, uh, I have no real depth of knowledge in. And it seems like lots of folks that come out of, um, you know, kind of the world of bluegrass or folk, um, certainly all types of country music, um, are influenced heavily by like Southern gospel. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, like what are the artists that I should know? Um, like who would your primary influences in that besides like, you know, what's happening in your church? Who are the, who are the people that you're listening to? Well, I mean, if you want to get down, start listening to, you know, some old hymnals, uh, Ralph Stanley's a pretty good one, you know, um, I remember there were two uh, two tapes that my papa had in his truck um, at all times uh, when I was younger. It was a Ralph Stanley gospel cassette and uh, the Hee Haw gospel album. There was a Hee Haw gospel album? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, honestly, for the longest time, the versions I knew were, you know, the versions that were played out every Sunday, you know, and, and then much later. Is that just vocally know, when you're in church or is that like full band? It would, you know, it from it would depend on, you know, from church to church and and uh, who was at the service that night or morning. Um, but the majority of the time there would, it would be, you know, piano. Uh, my mamma played oh, okay. uh, piano at Spencer's. Real Baptist for a long time, and uh, you know, my great aunts went over to Morgan's Creek, and uh, they were all um, they had really good sister harmonies, you know. So, uh, so what came first for you? Was it singing or playing guitar? Singing. It seems like a lot of folks that I interview that come up, and I know your record's not like a bluegrass record, but it's clearly a big influence, um, as well as like you know old school country and whatever else but it seems like a lot of folks i know in the bluegrass world came up playing with their families you know it was like kind of like passed down in Mm -hmm. that way is that was that the case for you yeah you know um there weren't a lot of uh, people that uh, played instruments in my immediate family Mm -hmm. um you know a lot of people sang my papa always wanted to learn how to play when i took a took an interest in it um he supported me 100 percent on it you know and for the longest time um you know heck i grew up dead end uh meets branch and uh you know there weren't any other kids just me and my sister and so like when mom and dad were working papa would take care of it and papa would take care of us and uh so spent a lot of time just playing guitar um figuring it out in front of Papa's, you know, easy chair. Was playing just the two of us, and neither of us really knew anything about chords or anything. But how'd you like, how'd you learn that stuff? Um, he had a he had an army buddy that used to come from uh, Kingsport, Tennessee, and uh, they would hang out for you know a week, two weeks, sometimes during the summer, or we'd go down there, mm. and uh, he showed me my first chords, and uh, got a little older. Um, and I knew a bunch of like here and there little things and didn't know how to put them together. And uh, heck, I'm still trying to figure that out sometimes. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. And when did you start playing? Like, um, did you, were you in a lot of bands growing up? Yeah. I, uh, I moved, uh, switched schools when uh, I was uh, 16. So uh, um, that was a good way to uh, meet people, you know, new environment, new place, and uh, had open lunch. So I spent a lot of time at open lunch until I met some folks just playing out in the courtyard playing guitar, you know, and uh, some dudes walked by and were like, hey, man, we're, we got this band uh, playing at, you know, Apple Day. We need somebody to come sing for us. And so I played with them for a little while, and yeah, they were just, you know, one off as far as like one gigs, you know, one gig or two gig bands here and there all the way sure. through like junior and senior year of high school. And just listened to a lot of, um, 
you know, still listen to a lot of uh, the stuff that I listened to, you know, growing up. And on top of that, uh, got mixed in a little bit of drive by truckers and, mm. and, you know, that influence. Like what are the old, like, um, your old country influences? Man, I listened to, uh, a lot of Merle Haggard and Buck Owens, mm. um, in high school a lot. Like, like how did you wind up gravitating that? I mean, how old are you? 26. 26. So you're young. Like, when high school wasn't that long ago. Um, um, so, you know, like, I, I'm always kind of fascinated by that when people uh, are listening to something that's, like, from a completely another period. That I'm sure that the vast majority of your classmates were not listening to Buck Owens and Merle Haggard records. You know what I mean? Like, what drew you to that? Well, I mean, a lot of them were. Oh, really? <laughs> a lot of them were listening to Merle Haggard, you know? Right. Um, I had a couple buddies that got down with Buck Owens, but... Um, everybody seemed to be able to agree on Merle Haggard. Um, I listened to, my grandpa had, uh, some records in the basement too that, uh, I'd flip through and he's a big Ernest Tubb fan. Mm. So, so that was, uh, one early on too. Um, okay. At what point in all that did you start writing your own songs? I've enjoyed writing just as long as singing, really. Mm. Just always enjoyed reading and uh, writing my own stories and uh, poems. And uh, the more I started playing and uh, the more I started singing, started learning other people's songs. And, and you know, that was, I really started getting into playing when I was about 13 or 14, mm. you know. And it was like, well, heck, man, you know, I'll just write my own songs, right. you know. So, uh you know, I interviewed Steve Earle yesterday and he was talking about like he does these like seminars for songwriting workshops and things like that. And he said that that's one of the key pieces of advice he always gives young songwriters that you have to read. Like, who do you get inspiration from on the literary side of things? You know, who do you, who do you read? I spent a lot of time uh, with uh, Kerouac early on. Right. Um, I just liked uh, you know, beat poets and um, how it was all just like a rapid fire, you know, in the moment. With your own songs, how, like, how autobiographical are they? I'd say it's just a, I mean, it's a mixture of, um, you know, personal experience sprinkled with tall tales and flat out lies and <laughs> uh, a little bit of everything in right. there together. There's, there's a, a quote of yours that I read that was, um, the voice that I want to write in is a voice for me and mine where I grew up. And I was curious, like, if you could elaborate on that. What did you mean by that? I mean, you're not talking about your voice, right? You're talking about, what, like, the lyrical tone? Well, like my tone. writing right. voice, yeah. Right. Like, I don't know. I kind of imagine um, the the songs that I'm writing um, are coming out of this one just collective voice you know like this person is writing these songs mm. um so it's you know this character that's loosely based on you know my personal experience experiences of my friends my close relatives you know stories i hear just on the road it's all yeah. into this one voice that hopefully the friends i make and the friends i have and the family i have back home and you know everybody can relate to it hopefully in some way and can you talk a little bit about like your writing process? You know, what what type of writer are you? Are you somebody that writes all the time? Do you write kind of in batches? Do you write for an album? Like, what's your what's your approach? Um, just write when I want to. You know, <laughs> I didn't get into playing music, so uh, I had to to do things I didn't want to do. You know, want to work right. for myself, and uh, and work hard, but. Uh, there's no point in in writing when you're not into it, because right. then you're just you're just rushing to get something out. Um, if you have to if you have to force it, then it's not very genuine. Right. So, um, so yeah, when I, whenever I take the notion to, I do, and I take the notion to not, I don't. What have the years between your first record, which came out what in like 2011? Yeah. And now, like, what, what have you been doing? Like, why the, the long break between those two records? Um, I've been playing 
a lot. Um, in some form or fashion, you know, sometimes playing, you know, early on it was one or two gigs and a lot of open mics and one or two jobs and, and then that got to where I'd have one job and, you know, three or four gigs or five gigs, mm. or, you know. It's Is that like, like playing locally around where you yeah. live? Yeah. Right. Um, started for a long time. It was uh, bouncing back and forth between uh, two music scenes in uh, Lexington, Kentucky and Huntington, West Virginia which is uh, Huntington's where I got my first like good proper bar gig, I would say. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was back and forth between Huntington and Lexington, and then you know you meet people and meet other bands and start getting other gigs, and so then that circle was from Charleston to Louisville, you know? Right. So, and it's just been, well, since 2011, like the main focus has been to just play wherever, whenever, uh, in as small as, you know, as big of a circle as we can, but be happy with the small circle we got, and it'll just get bigger as it, you know, it's kind of like a baseball, and once you start taking it apart, it just fall apart eventually, <laughs> get far enough into it. Is this, uh, with this new record, is this the first time you've ever been like, like, are you in the middle of a tour cycle now, or are you out on the road a ton? Um, yeah, this is a, it's a, been a pretty good tour cycle. We started August first, and uh, going pretty, pretty steady to August twenty seventh. Before that, I had a day and a half home and was gone overseas for four days, which was. Uh, Where'd you go? Uh, we went to Oslo, Norway, uh, London, England, and then Amsterdam. How was that? Uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, a lot to take in in four days, but. Is that I, your first time over there? Or? Yeah. 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 Um, it's something I've always wanted to do, but um, I always had kind of the same philosophy as I had to, you know, coming out here. Um, I always wanted to go to these places, but um, first and foremost, I need to be playing music because if I'm not playing it, somebody else ain't playing it for me, you know, right. especially when you don't have a CD for anybody to play <laughs> or an right. album. And uh, so, and then that was another big focus too, was trying to get an album out. Like you said, I haven't, came out with anything since 2011 really other than two uh EPs mm. um but it's not been out of lack of it's not been for lack of trying um this is the third time we've recorded and well I've recorded in the last uh three years oh really yes yeah what, like third time like trying to get a record made kind of thing yeah so um, how did this one come like how did you wind up uh connecting with Sturgill Simpson and and getting him on board to produce How'd that come about? Um, I had a gig in Nashville, and uh, Miles uh, came out to a gig and met him and got to yakking about, you know, both being from Kentucky and music. And uh, Is Miles his drummer? Yeah. Right. And uh, so Miles Miller uh, um, made the introduction. And... Uh, I got Sturgill to come out to a, a gig and uh, hear my stuff. Wait, what was that? Hear my stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, was, I heard that as he messed up. I was he like, messed Wait, up. What? <laughs> hmm. um, okay, so what? I mean, what was that like recording with him? What's what's his what's his approach in the studio? Like, was, how is he as a producer? I mean, I think he's pretty good as a producer. Like, does he get in there with you? Like, was he working out your songs with you, or was he like more hands off, or just kind of get the right guys in the room? You know, there's all these different ways, you know, to do it. Yeah. I well, mean, I mean, he got the right guys in the room for sure. You know. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, you know, he he nudged it where it needed to, um, and kind of sat back um, when something was just, you know. Just find the way it was. I mean, it's it's interesting. I read that that uh, another. Th I think this was something you said, uh, referring to the gritty mountain sound that you wanted yeah. your record to sound like. I mean, what is that gritty mountain sound to you? What do you mean by that? I mean, it's a it's a mixture of a lot of things. It's it's just like the, a drive, you know, like just this, like that, um, just this bounce that you hear, um, like a train, you know, mm. in a bluegrass song, just like right. getting down the road. And, uh, but it, it, on top of that, like the grit, um, sounding like the, uh, 
just the cadence of uh, the words as they come out, um, the sayings, uh, the imagery, just, you know, just feels like, yeah, just like a, a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, has, how's the response been to it so far? Purgatory. Yeah, we've we've uh, we've been playing a lot of places and had quite a few people waiting for us when we got there, which is uh, you know means a lot uh, to go someplace you've never been. Right. Have people there waiting to sing along with you, which is something else. How long has your record been out? It's been out since the fourth. And what is uh, Hickman Holler Records? Is that like your own imprint through Thirty Tigers? Mm Mm-hmm. What's uh, what's that been like to to work with them? It seems like thirty. It seems like all the best stuff is coming out on Thirty Tigers. You know, what I mean, that seems like one of the real kind of hubs, the epicenter of the, whatever you want to call it, roots Americana, alt country kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just um, it seems like a, you know I looked at a lot of things um, from a lot of places, like a lot of deals, you know, and uh, did you have different labels wanting to wanting to put your record out? Yeah. And that's a good place to be after, like you said, trying to make this record a few times. Yeah. And that gap between records coming out. It's a, it's a blessed assurance that you're doing something right, yeah. you know, um, when somebody takes an interest in it. But uh, it seemed like uh, everybody was interested, but they were also interested in, you know, uh, taking me for all I was worth. And, uh, which, <laughs> That's you know, the modern day record deal, right? Yeah. We're gonna take a piece of this, and we're gonna take and a piece of that. that. You're like, I don't even have any of that shit yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, and so, I mean, how do you navigate that? Like, what's it? You know, say no, right? You know, if you don't want to do something, you know, I mean, you're the one, you know, busting your ass. I mean, can you talk a little bit about that? What that's like as a young, you know, artist starting out and 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 going on the road. Like, how do you bring a band? How do you afford to do any of it? You, just you know, work in your circle. You know, I for a long time I couldn't. There was a. I mean, there was a lot of places that we wanted to go as a band, but we didn't have. You know, I mean, we had families, and you know, James got a kid now and there's things you got to worry about um and uh so we just kept it small let it grow like do you alternate but do you go out just you and a guitar and then sometimes if you can pull it together do it like full band yeah sort of jump between them a lot of times i'll go out and i'll test new waters um just solo Mm. and then um I'll go back out with the band later if it's a if there's a call for it. Right. Sometimes you know, um, some areas just a just you and an acoustic is all you need. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, there ain't no call for you know the whole honky tonk band. Those shows can be really kind of in the moment and fun though too. You know, they're different. Oh yeah, I each, did a couple each and every one. It was like honestly the first time I think I ever actually enjoyed it. So I've always been scared out of my mind playing that way. Because I didn't come up that way. I didn't come up playing an acoustic guitar by myself on stage. I came up in a fucking loud volume, you know, big amp noise kind of, you know, scene. So for me, going and playing those kind of, you know, just that, that scared the fuck out of me for the longest time. I swear to God, like two months ago, I played a couple shows like that. It was the first time I was ever like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I totally get why that's a rush, you know. Uh, so what's next for you? Like, what do you, what do you got? Uh, you know, what's out in front of you? Well, we're playing here tonight. Um, and then we got San Francisco. And you know, we're just m- moving our way up the coast. How long do you think you're going to be out on the road for this record? I'll be on the road with it until the next one. Hopefully it won't take as long as it did to come out with this one. Something tells me it won't. Wow. I don't know if uh, uh, if you feel like playing a song, but that would be great. Sometimes people do. Sometimes people don't. But we always encourage it. Well, we can always try. Dean Nolan had a man with 
good place for sifting He invited me digging So I picked up my screen and a shovel to dig In a jar of shine Traded me fair for a bottle of wine Brothers Barnes Mountain Wine We trudged through the snow Straight up the hillside Took a ridge for a while Then we slowly went down To an overhang Hid from the ridge line We bent over our handles And we bit in the ground Dark and blood Ground, but the wine kept us going. Moonshine was flowing, keeping us warm. Cause you can't hold a girl with a fistful of shovel. Gotta find your fire in the company of corn. For a while, then it all turned to ashes. Found a bunch of broke flint and a few bits of bone. Then I heard Jesse yell over the pile he was sifting. Shook the hills like the angels were calling us home. Jesse, Zachary, come home. It was banded as hell, it was fluted in Clovis. It was hot as a pistol, I kept on my side. And I was feeling so fierce, I was broke ass and busted I pulled out my pistol and took Jesse's life Close like that is a hard point to find Makes the swift to come by with a good chunk of change Left over for burn on whatever meanness Whatever woman is coming my way Sit in the cell for the bandit Clovis. I stole off a no and went and killed him that day. I reckon the chase of the pills and the powder, corn liquor and women are the culprits to blame. All right, that was Tyler Childers doing a stripped-down version of his song Banded Clovis off his record Purgatory. Make sure you get out and buy that record or stream it or listen to it however you do. Um, I don't think Tyler has a website because I looked and I didn't find one, but I'm sure he's out on the road somewhere. I think he's going to be hustling for a long time, and I I just suspect we'll be hearing a lot from that young man in the not-too-distant future. Uh, Check him out on Twitter, at T.T. Childers or on Facebook, at Tyler Childers Music. There you go. That's it for this week. Go ahead and listen to all the old episodes of Walking the Floor available to you in the iTunes store. If you like it, leave us a nice review or a five-star rating or whatever. Every little bit helps, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back next week, maybe with the Chris Stapleton interview, if I can get it together to edit it that quick. All right. Adios, amigos! Well, my heart is sweating bullets from the circles it has raised Like a little feathered engine calling out the clouds for rain I go